What's up you guys? Today we've got a tying video on a, a micro chubby dry fly that I love for dry dropper. Okay, I just want to say that this is not my pattern. Um, I'm not the originator of it. This is the way that I like to tie it and the color combination and a few kind of small differences that I make to the fly. The reason that I like fishing this fly is that you can tie them really small and they'll still hold up, hold up a dropper really well. And a lot of people fish chubbies, but they fish them in a pretty large size. And I think the fish see those a lot. So if you can downsize, you know, this fly works great. Okay, you guys, I'm going to give you guys a few kind of tips on the micro chubby and why I like it. The first tip is that, you know, I like it because it's small and a lot of people fish chubbies, but they fish them in a pretty big size. And so I like to downsize everything by two or three sizes. Um, it gives the fish something a little bit different that they haven't seen. And then I also will tie it in just like a bunch of different colors, you know, black, olive, tan, yellow. I mean, I'll just kind of have those in my box and I can just kind of cycle through them. Um, and it just is kind of a general attractor for, you know, caddis um, and some bigger terrestrials that I really like. So that's, that's kind of the first tip. Okay, the second kind of tip that I'll give you is that this fly works great to hold up small tungsten nymphs. So I will run this fly a lot of times on my Euro rig. I'll just cut off that second fly, tie on that micro chubby, you know, if I run into some water where it's a little shallower or I want to get the, you know, there's a chance a fish might eat a dry fly or it's some pocket water and I want to kind of hold the fly in that zone longer, I'll cut that second nymph off and put this on, you know, and I, it holds up, you know, for the, for the most part, like a size 10 will hold up a three mil bead fly. And that's a pretty, pretty heavy nymph. So it works great in dry dropper situations. Anyway, those are kind of some tips for this fly and some reasons that I like it. But let's get into tying it and I'll kind of show you how I tie it and kind of what I do different. Not a huge, not a huge difference, but I think just a little bit something different for the fish to look at. So let's get into tying it now. Okay, so in the vise I have a dry fly hook. It's a size 10 umqua. There, I'm just going to start the thread right about there. And trim that off. So I like this fly anywhere from a size 10 down to a 14. You can tie this, so I'm going to run my thread all the way back to where the barb would be. Come back fo forward, just kind of laying down a thread base. I'm gonna stop right about there, which is about the two thirds mark. And I'm gonna grab a piece of glow bright. And I'm gonna double that over and wrap that around my thread just like that. So now we have four strands. I'm gonna capture it on top. So now we have two strands, two strands folded over pull that back and then I'm just going to pull all the way back just like that. So it's up on top. See those four strands all the way back for the tail. This is a little hot spot. I do these in a bunch of different colors, different hot spot colors and also different body colors. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to trim this. I'm going to trim it real short, just like that. Okay. So it's just a little tiny hot spot tag. Then I'm going to take my root beer crystal flash. I'm going to take, three strands of this. So I'm going to grab three of these and so I'm going to grab three, cut those off just like that. I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the glow bright. So I'm going to come back forward to that same spot, take those three strands, fold them over, over the thread, just like that, pull them up just on top. And I'm going to fold those back and I want those to sit this is root beer crystal flash. I want those to sit just on top of the glow bright. So just like that, see how they're on top. It's important that you clip, you trim the glow bright first. Otherwise it'll, you'll have a hard time getting that crystal flash to sit on top of it. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to trim that just barely longer than the glow bright. So it's almost like double. So now you have like a, a normal tail length, but of two different materials. Not sure this matters, but it's the way that I like to tie it. So now I'm going to take some, um, this is pheasant tail colored UV crystal dubbing and I'm going to make a noodle and I'm just going to coat this just like this. So there's like kind of just like a little spot there. Um, not all the way up because now we're going to tie in our piece of foam here and I want that to be just about the length of the glow bright. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to capture this right here. So I'm going to do about three or four wraps. This will spin like that. It doesn't matter as long as you keep it on top, because when you, when we tie it in the second spot, it'll keep it from spinning. So I'm going to do that. 
Now I'm gonna take my Ice Fur Polar Bear cream color, wing, and this is a little bit too much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little bit of that out, and I'm gonna take this Polar Bear cream wing, and I'm gonna fold it over just like how I did. Let's see if we can get this right. So I'm gonna fold this over just like I did earlier. Let's see if we can get this. This can be fiddly. We wanna place this right on top. So if you look on top, we have one there, just like that. And then we're gonna, we're gonna do a couple wraps with that one to kind of lock that in. And then we're gonna fold this back a little bit. And we want to kind of do like a little bolt bump there so that we can capture these, this other one up on top. So see how I captured that right there? So it's a little bit poking out, but that'll keep it from pulling out. This stuff has a tendency to want to pull out on itself. Okay, I'm gonna come in on the scissors and we're just gonna roughly trim this. This is not the final trim, but just kind of enough to keep it out of the way. Just like that. And set the rest aside because we'll use it for the front wing. We've got our sexy floss. This is tan, size medium. And we're gonna capture one on one side just like this. We want them right on the side. And we're gonna do two wraps and then we're gonna come around and we're gonna kind of loop this. I'm not gonna cut it. So now on the other side, I'm just kind of looping it just like that. And then I'm gonna capture that twice or two or three times, I guess. So now we've got our legs tied in. Come back in with that crystal flash, or not crystal flash, but the ice stubbing. See how that twisted? Doesn't matter. We'll fix that when we get to that next stage. So now we're gonna do that ice stub to cover up our thread, pull this back a little bit, and then we're gonna wrap forward with more ice stub. This will take just a minute to do, and we're just gonna kind of coat that underneath part with a little bit of this ice stub pheasant tail color just like that come all the way forward with that roughly add just a little bit more in there come back a little bit oh, that's not tight enough that's a little bit too much that's better okay Okay, so now we're gonna secure the next portion of the foam, right right about there. So you want just a little bit of room behind the eye to finish the fly. So a few wraps there. Make sure it's nice and on top and tight. Okay, there we go. Come back in with our wing material. Do the same thing, fold it over, place it right on top, just like that. Do a couple wraps, securing wraps over that, fold it right there. And then this can be a little tricky because sometimes it wants to not capture that front, but it's important that you fold it over and you capture that right there so that it doesn't pull out. Looking good. Now we're gonna grab this leg back here, trim that off. And we're gonna use the rest of that floss for that front leg, same thing, fold it over, come over. So now we've captured our front legs and our rear legs, just like that. And then now grab our ice stub again and come in here with a little bit of ice stub. That might be too much. We'll see, you can always pull it off if it is. A little bit too much, come in there. Clean it up, let's just get rid of that there, okay. Okay, I like to tilt that in my vise, and then I come in here and do a whip finish right behind the eye, just like that, and then trim. Okay, so now the last step is to trim this fly up. So the first thing I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll gauge this. You want a little bit of a lip in the front because if you're doing a dry dropper, it keeps the fly from sinking as much, so I'm just gonna trim that straight across and then I'm gonna come in and just kind of get rid of those edges. You don't have to do that, but I just think it looks a little bit better. Then we're gonna separate our legs here, right? Just like that. So now we've got really long legs and a big wing we need to take care of. So now we're gonna take the wing, we're gonna size this up 
We want it just a little bit longer than the tail. Cut straight down just like that. Now our wing's done. So now we have to deal with these legs. You could use a Sharpie. I like this marker. I'll come in here and just add some um, markings on the legs. You don't have to do this. It's just uh, something I like to do. I think the fly looks cool this way. I don't think you really need it for the fly to fish. I'll just come in here and kind of make a few marks on those legs, just like that. Then come back down here to these, to the other side, Let's get that one out of there. And this can be a little fiddly. So you could just use like solid brown floss if you wanted. I like the barring. Come in there, add just a little bit of barring to these legs, just like that. Now, the last thing to do before this fly is finished is come in here and trim these legs. So I usually use the barring as a gauge for the leg length. Uh, but you just, you don't want the legs too long. You don't want them too short. If I'm fishing water where the fish have seen a lot of these type of chubby flies, I will tie this fly with just front legs instead of the rear legs. So you don't have quite as many legs. It's not quite as in their face. So that's about the length that I like the legs and the wing. You can see that that's a finished micro chubby. Come in here and just kind of clean up some of that wing. It's got that, I'll push this back up. So it's got that nice tail there, hot spot. It's a pretty cool little summertime pattern that I like. I'll tie it in a bunch of different colors. Um, like I'll do a black and purple. I'll do an all tan that's more of like a hopper. And that is your finished micro chubby. Get out on the water and fish it.